I'm going to take your questions and then I'm going to answer them. Struggling with ASO in a competitive category, should I focus on lower popularity keywords or still target higher? So here's the trick to keyword uh, competitiveness, the competitive score and the popularity score. They're both really good scores for you to understand what you're up against and for you to aim. So if you can find a high popularity score with a low competitiveness score, definitely go for it. But if you can't, and that's becoming more and more normal because the more people are doing app store optimization and more keywords are being used, you don't have to go just off of the competitiveness score. Use it as a way to rank which keywords you should target first. Still go after higher popularity keywords as long as you can compete in them. And when I say that, I mean, if you have the right number of ratings, if you have the ability to make sure that your keywords are in the name properly in the keyword list in the subtitle you optimize that very well then you can go and target slightly higher popularity keywords than what you might if you didn't i've noticed that when an app uses a keyword i'm targeting and fully optimized for as its app name apple seems to give it a boost is that true absolutely absolutely the one thing that you always want to make sure is the keyword that is most important. And that could be one word, that could be two words, that should be in your name. There's nothing more important to the algorithm than the name. If you think about it, there's also a reason. Apple tends to say, use the app name to describe your app. If a user, a potential user reads on the app store, going through a list of apps in search results, what an app does in the name, they're more likely to get it. And that's really what you want to aim for. Always have your most important keyword in the name of your app. And that's true for Google as well. Okay, and interesting questions. Are you able to use competitor brand keywords in your keyword list without punishment? So yes and no, and maybe. It isn't something I would recommend. And that is because, uh, and I assume when you say brand keywords, their name, if you use a competitor name in your keyword list, one, you're not gonna rank very high because there's another app with that exact same name that's likely in the app's name, what I was just saying. So it, they're gonna get the number one position in most cases, not in all cases. There are a whole bunch of weird nuances for that. But if someone is searching for a brand by name, if I'm looking for Coca-Cola, I'm probably not gonna download a Pepsi app. That's a lot less likely than me going into the app store and looking for an app for a soft drink. So realistically, by doing that, you're just wasting a keyword because even if you rank second, you're unlikely to get the download. And that's gonna mean that your app is gonna drop, 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 drop over time. And that's gonna hurt your overall download. So don't waste your characters on a brand name. What do you think about not filling all space in keyword field? I'm all for not taking up all the space just for the sake of taking up all the space. It all comes down to focus. The algorithm gives you, if you can think about it that way, 100% of its attention. 100% is split across the name, the keyword list, and the subtitle. But it's not really split across them as evenly. It's split across all the content that you put in them. So if you put all the characters in the name, that's 30 characters, 30 characters in the subtitle, and 100 characters in the keyword list, you have 160 characters. The algorithm gives 100% uh, to 160 potential characters. The less you give the algorithm, the more it will think those keywords are really, really important. So yes, if you focus, only use the keywords you need. Now, if you need all 100 characters, definitely do it. If you don't, don't fill it up just for the sake of having more keywords. If you are focused, you will get better results. And because you can use localizations, you can make sure that you use fewer keywords in each localization that are really focused. And that's how you win with the localization trick and app store optimization when it comes to focus. Uh, what's the best approach for long tail keywords, especially the ones with stop words? Suppose that the keyword with stop word is more popular. For example, learning games for kids versus kids learning games. First of all, stop words are words that the algorithm drops before trying to understand what your app does. And one of those is for. So your, your stop words are words that the algorithm will definitely just ignore. There's really no other way to optimize for them. You can put them in your keyword list or in the name or in the subtitle on the Apple side. They're just not going to work because the algorithm drops them. Realistically, as long as you make sure that you're optimizing for both learning and games and kids, um, you should be fine. Maybe in, the, in this case, I would try putting games in the keyword list. I don't love saying this, but it's definitely worth an experiment. A lot of this is experimental. A lot of this is the kind of thing that um, might work for you and may not work for 99% of other apps. Please speak to the use of secondary localizations to boost US app store optimization. Well, this is something that I've been talking about for years now, but still not enough people have caught up with. So the idea is that Apple takes 
10 languages, 10 localizations, reads all of them and uses all of them to show relevant apps in search results in the US specifically. This is specific to the US and specific to the App Store. And the reason Apple does that is because in the US, there's so many communities that are still speaking a language that is not English and Apple wants them to be able to find apps very, very easily, something that makes a lot of sense. The thing is, if you don't use all these languages to localize your own app, you don't have to use those languages in those localizations, and you can use English. Apple doesn't actually care what language is inside those localizations. They just read all the keywords and use them. So if you use English keywords in your French localization, for example, you can rank for these as if you put them in your English localization. Now there are 10 of those. So it means that instead of the 160 characters I mentioned before, you now have 10 times that. A few quirks that you should know about before is that Apple doesn't merge languages. So if you put a keyword in English, you should use it again in a different language if you want that to combine. So let's say um, you have fitness at home is a keyword that you wanna target and you have fitness and home in your English localization and you want to use uh, fitness equipment, let's say, in your French localization, you also need to include the word fitness along with equipment in order for that to work. The good thing about it is there's no duplication. So you can use as many keywords across all of them to build the different sets. And because all of the keywords get uh, mushed together, you can use the same one multiple times. But just like with English, do not use the same keyword in the name and subtitle, the name and keyword list that is duplication. So the same rules that apply for everything. Um, so I mentioned conversions. How does that factor in ranks for Google Play and the App Store is a general score or per keyword? Uh, it's a combination. I think overall apps have a per keyword conversion, but also conversion. And so if you have keywords that are working better and keywords that are working less better, the algorithm will understand that's the normal. If you have extremes, it will know that something weird is going on and it will deprioritize them to the point where eventually it will probably get someone to look at you and make sure that those are not being manipulated. The key with Apple is avoid manipulation. If you're doing something and it makes sense, it can still be seen as manipulation. But if they do anything, you can say, I didn't do anything on purpose. If you do something on purpose, they will know and they will find you. And I've heard too many stories of even large companies who know people at Apple and have been around for a long time, even them getting penalized. And that's not something you want to be in. And that's all I have for you today. You should definitely follow my channel if you like this sort of thing. And I will say goodbye. See you all in the next one.